Hello again everyone, and today I'm taking a look at one of the first lenses released for Nikon's new Z-mount full-frame mirrorless cameras, the Nikkor Z 50mm f1.8 S. It is only for Nikon's new Z-mount mirrorless camera systems, and it costs about $600 US or just over £500 here in the UK. That's pretty expensive for a 50mm f1.8 lens, although there are a few other expensive ones out there. Clearly, this is not intended to be just an average quality nifty 50. On a full frame camera, a fast 50mm lens is a staple option, one of the first lenses manufacturers tend to release, because that focal length is really versatile, giving you just a tiny emphasis on, on your subject, while still being wide angle enough to get the bigger picture and a maximum aperture as fast as f1.8 can get you some pretty snappy shutter speeds and pretty out of focus backgrounds. It's even quite possible to use this lens for portrait pictures, but don't get too close to your subject for fear of distorting their facial features. The lens's body is made of a mixture of metal and heavy duty plastic, and accordingly it feels very high quality. It's fairly large for a 50mm f1.8 optic, but at 415 grams, just under a pound, it's not too heavy. The optics inside are made up of 12 glass elements, which is pretty complex for a lens of this type, and goes some way to explain its size. It's all based on a metal lens mount with a weather sealing gasket around the edge. Next comes the large metallic focus ring, which turns very smoothly, being nicely damped. It doesn't respond amazingly well to being controlled though, lagging behind being turned a little bit. Something positive though is that the lens exhibits almost no focus breathing at all when you change focus, which is useful for video makers. The lens's autofocus motor is silent and works reasonably quickly, although I have seen slightly quicker lenses than this before. Its accuracy was fine in my tests. The filter thread size is 62mm, and the lens comes with a decently sized plastic hood. It doesn't have image stabilisation built in, but then again, Nikon's cameras now have built in image stabilisation. It's not a very sexy looking lens in my opinion, but in fairness, that's hardly top of the list of priorities. Overall, the build quality is great. Well, let's move on and look at image quality on my Nikon Z7 camera. We'll start in the 45 megapixel full frame mode. In the middle of the image, sharpness and contrast are absolutely perfect straight from f1.8. Nice. The good news is that, unlike on less expensive 50mm f1.8 lenses, the corners look lovely and sharp too, mostly retaining their contrast. In fact, for your interest, here's how it compares to the Nikon 50mm f1.8G lens for digital SLR cameras on the same camera adapted on. There's obviously quite a difference in quality there. Anyway, stop the lens down to f2.8 and f4 for very marginal improvements, but really, the lens is brilliantly sharp straight out of the gate. Stop down to f11 and you'll begin to see just a little softness emerging from the effects of diffraction. So, overall, you couldn't really ask for much more from a lens like this, it's clearly a major cut above any of the less expensive 50mm f1.8s out there. Well, let's test it in APS-C mode now. The Nikon Z7 has a 20 megapixel APS-C mode, which is the same resolution as Nikon's only APS-C Z-mount camera at the time of writing this review, the little Z50. So, let's quickly see how well it performs. It's as you'd expect, considering the full frame results, very sharp in the middle with good contrast, and pretty much the same in the corners. Stop down to f2.8 or f4 for some absolutely minuscule improvement, and again at f11 a little softness begins to appear. So if you're using a Z50 camera, or any other Z mount camera with a 20 megapixel smaller APS-C sensor, then again you'll be laughing. Alright, let's see about distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. If you turn in camera corrections off, then you can see just a little barrel distortion being projected. The corners are somewhat dark at f1.8 though. The corners brighten a little at f2.8 and dramatically so at f4, so if nothing else, you should definitely leave vignetting correction turned on. Now let's see about close up image quality. The lens can focus down to 40cm, just a little closer than usual for a 50mm prime lens. Close up image quality is a little softer at f1.8, sharpness picks up a little at f2.8, and f4 looks excellent again. 
How well does the lens work against bright light? We don't see very much flaring, but we do see a mild loss of contrast when bright lights are in or even just near your picture. And while we're shooting in the dark, let's look at coma levels. Less expensive 50mm lenses can really struggle with coma smearing. Here you can see the new Z-mount lens up against Nikon's older F-mount G-type lens which we saw earlier. And you can see the dramatic difference. Coma is corrected impressively well on the Z-mount lens, straight from f1.8. It's easy to get out of Vickers backgrounds with this lens at f1.8, so let's see about the quality of this lens's bokeh. It really does look very soft, which is not always the case with other 50mm lenses. Those out of focus backgrounds are really beautiful. The only mild issue I noticed was a slight cat's eye shape to bokeh highlight at f1.8, that's very common for most bright aperture lenses though. And related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f1.8, we can see some green and pink tints to bokeh highlights, common for a fast aperture lens. The good news is that you only need to stop down to f2.8 for those colours to almost disappear. Overall, it's very difficult to fault the Nikkor Z 50mm f1.8 S lens in almost any way. I have to be honest, I don't like its philosophy because I think these new full-frame mirrorless camera systems are screaming out for 50mm f1.8 lenses that are tiny and inexpensive, not big and pricey. And most professionals will much prefer an aperture as wide as f1.4 anyway. But whatever your philosophy on marketing photographic equipment, ultimately this Nikon lens truly is excellent in pretty much every way. It just works so well and the image quality is so refined. So if you're happy spending that kind of money on it, its results will be seriously rewarding for you, so it comes highly recommended.